Chia Niang Hong, Group General Manager, City Development Limited. Ms. Esther An, Chief Sustainability Officer, City Development Limited. Dean Simon Chesterman, NUS Law. Distinguished guests, fellow students and environmentalists. Welcome to the sixth Asia Environment Lecture. I am Eric from the Environmental Law Student Association at NUS Law, and I will be your MC for today. This lecture is the joint initiative of the National University of Singapore, which has three programs of study and research relating to the environment, as well as City Developments Limited, Singapore's most environmentally conscious property developer. Held annually since 2013, the Asia Environment Lecture is jointly organized by the Law Faculty's Asia Pacific Center for Environmental Law and two multidisciplinary environmental studies programs here at NUS the Masters of Science in Environmental Management, or the MEM program, and the Bachelor in Environmental Studies, or the BES program. Since its beginning, thought leaders championing environmental sustainability have been invited to share their insights on issues pertaining to environmental conservation and sustainability, and highlight the importance of environment to the countries and people in this region. Today, we have the distinct honor to have Dr. Richard Sander with us today. Named by Time Magazine as a hero of the environment and the father of carbon trading, he founded the Chicago Climate Exchange, which was the world's first exchange to facilitate the reduction and trading of all six greenhouse gases. Dr. Sander is currently the Aaron Director, Lecturer in Law and Economics at the University of Chicago Law School and an honorary professor at the University of Hong Kong. His latest book, Electronic Trading and Blockchain, Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow, was published by World Scientific just last June. This June. This brings us to the topic of Dr. Sanders' lecture today, entitled Financial Innovation, the Convergence of Environment and Finance. It will explore market-based approaches in promoting better air quality, as well as opening up frontiers and opportunities in areas such as water quality and quantity, and the application of new technologies such as blockchain to environmental markets. We also have the great honor of having as our moderator for today's lecture, Professor Tommy Cole. Previously Dean of Law School from 1971 to 1974, and currently Ambassador at Large at the Singapore Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Professor Cole has been involved at the highest levels of environmental diplomacy, including chairing the third UN Convention of the Law of the Sea as well as the Real Earth Summit. For his contribution to environmental diplomacy, Professor Cole was recognized as a champion of the Earth by the United Nations Environment Program in 2006. Closer to home, Professor Cole has remained a strong defender and advocate for the environment in Singapore and chairs the MEM Advisory Committee amongst various academic and research advisory committees. Now, I would like to invite Associate Professor Jolene Lin, the Director of EPSEL, to give the opening remarks on behalf of the AR Organizing Committee. Professor, please. Professor Cole, Dr. Sando, Mr. Chia, Group General Manager, CDL, Mr. S Ms. Esther An, Chief Sustainability Officer, CDL, Professor Chesterman, Dean of the NUS Law, Distinguished Guests. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you to the sixth Asia Environment Lecture. This annual lecture is a flagship initiative of the National University of Singapore to raise awareness of the most pressing environmental issues of our time, the urgent need for action, and the solutions available. As, men as Eric mentioned, the Asia Environment Lecture is jointly organized by the Law Faculty's Asia Pacific Center for Environmental Law and two multidisciplinary environmental studies programs here at NUS, the MEM, and the Bachelor in Environmental Studies, the BES. Let me briefly say a few words about the three organizers. The MEM was launched in 2001. It is a multidisciplinary program which provides education in environmental management for senior managers and officers in corporations, government, and non-governmental organizations. The MEM involves the collaboration of nine faculties across NUS and is hosted by the School of Design and Environment. The other contributing faculties are the faculties of Arts and Social Sciences, Engineering, Law, Science, the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, the NUS Business School, 
the Sorcery Hawk School of Public Policy, sorry, of Public Health, and the School of Medicine. The BES is launched, it was launched in 2011. Its mission is to produce the next generation of environmental professionals who can contribute to solutions for complex, modern environmental program, uh, issues such as climate change. BES strives to develop environmental leaders, agents of change who are passionate about the environment, scientifically informed of the issues, and creative in generating solutions. The Asia Pacific Center for Environmental Law was established in 1996 by the NUS Law Faculty in collaboration with the World Conservation Union Commission on Environmental Law and the UN Environment Program. EPSEL has since established itself as a center of excellence in the region for teaching, capacity building, and advancing innovative legal scholarship. Its members frequently present their research in international conferences and provide training in environmental law to government officers, lawyers, judges, and civil society. We are at a moment in history where research and practice on, on finance and environment is crucially important. We are therefore very honored to have Dr. Sando here with us today as he is simply a trailblazing pioneer in this field. At 9 a.m. Singapore time this morning, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change issued a special report on global warming on what, of 1.5 degrees Celsius. The IPCC is a UN body for assessing the science related to climate change. This report will be a key scientific input into the Climate Change Conference in Poland in December, when governments will aim to finalize a set of rules for countries to follow on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius has a clear message. First, we are already seeing the consequences of one degree Celsius of global warming through more extreme weather events, rising sea levels, and a diminishing Arctic sea ice amidst other changes. Second, limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees would require rapid, far-reaching, and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. Third, some of the kinds of actions that would be needed to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees are already underway around the world, but they need to be accelerated. This is where environmental finance has an important role to play. Green bonds, climate insurance, emissions trading, environmental and energy futures trading, to name a few, will play an important role in mobilizing the finance required for climate adaptation and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The innovation of new environmental financial products and ways of structuring the sale and purchase of renewable energy, for example, has been enabled by breakthroughs such as blockchain technology. The United Nations has seized upon the exciting potential of blockchain technology and supports an open global initiative known as the Climate Chain Coalition to support collaboration to advance blockchain and related digital solutions to help mobilize climate finance and enhance the measurement reporting and verification to scale up climate action. In fact, the first project out of Asia to be part of the Climate Chain Coalition is owned by a Singapore-based company. I look forward very much to learning more about these developments from Dr. Sandel's talk. <coughs> Finally, and very importantly, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank CDL for their generous support of this lecture. At the recent Building and Construction Authority Awards 2018, CDL was awarded an impressive 25 accolades, including 12 Green Mark Awards, that recognize the strong environmental performance of CDL's projects. We are privileged indeed to have CDL extend its support for environmental consciousness to include the Asian Environment Lecture. Thank you. <laughs>